Welcome to PNR Show, Season 4, Episode 17, The Crisp. I'd rather have longer than life. I'll take a strong stout over stride. I'd prefer to confer with a half pint of ale than live a long life till my private parts fail. For life without liquor is to no avail. So bring me longer for life. From the deepest, darkest, most rarely used parts of the internet, it's the Pint of No Return show, your beer and bros podcast. When we're here, season season four, Man, episode seventeen. I'm trying to use all the dulcet, deep tones, and all of my host abilities. That these this is not this is not in PR, Rob. That these gentlemen so desperately missed the last two weeks. <laughs> Hell, I'm just glad I'm not doing the intro. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm joined as always by Keith and uh, Gary. Jeremy is dead to us. <laughs> Jeremy is actually closer to us than he's ever been before, and yet farther away. He's in yep. the he's in the lion's den, as it were. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how are you guys doing? Pretty good. Doing Hanging in there. Great. Good. Enjoying some humid, hot Rochester summer weather. Well, I have to say, I uh, I listened to the uh, two podcasts that I missed out on. Um, I had to drive myself back from Nashville to the Houston area uh, on Saturday. I drove by myself. So needless to say, I got caught up on a bunch of podcasts. Nice. And uh, I listened to the boys, and I have to say, you guys did a wonderful job. Well, very thank generous you. of you. <laughs> it's, it's very kind, but definitely, <laughs> we learned so quickly when you're gone how much you're uh, uh, leading us in this discussions. Well, so, I mean, I was I was going to say it's mostly wonderful because they kept going on and on about how they they missed the heck out of it. <laughs> so, there is mean, that too. That was. But I, I mean, I really, I did enjoy, I, I did enjoy all the, all the lovely conversations. And uh, uh, even for my pre pre show, I took uh, generous sips of both the nugget nectar and Bengali. Oh, okay. Then catch us up real quick. What do you think? Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed the nugget nectar. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I thought you would because all the hops are gone. <laughs> well, I. <laughs> I got quite a bit of hops, but maybe that's just because I'm I prefer the uh, the lesser side of the hops. But I, I yeah. still taste it and still smell it. So I mean, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I would give that a, like a, probably an eight myself. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, nice. The Bengali, not as much of a fan. Um, I felt that the, that it was all hops and not much else. Um, personally, so I probably would only give that like a five. But um, but the nugget nectar I really really enjoyed and and if you if it's as flat as you're saying it is um, I, I would be interested to try it when it's fresh off the off the truck as it were yeah well it comes out it's uh, it's supposed to be a spring seasonal but it usually comes out early February -ish. so this time around I'm gonna grab uh, a six of it and immediately get cans out to everyone just so that mm -hmm. we can do that. Um, we did do it once before on the old show. A long time yes, ago, I think, but it's, a to completely different can too, by the way. Yeah, yeah it, cans were cans were new that year, which is yeah. a year and a half. So they've been doing them ever since. So I mean, I also enjoyed the 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 conversation you had about uh, the local craft breweries and which states had the most, and um, having just been in North Carolina and going gone to three craft breweries myself, two in North Carolina and one in Tennessee. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. So yeah. And, uh, and a good time. It was really tough coming back to the 95 degree heat. Yeah. <laughs> like a smack in the face. Cause we were up in the mountains and it was like low to mid seventies every day and down into the fifties at night. Oh, it's just beautiful. So, but I digress. We have, as Keith likes to say, a hard out this evening. So we should get right to our beer this evening. Once again, from the Six Point folks, we've got The Crisp. Yep. This is yep. a lager. Yeah, this one's a uh, hoppy one was for us. This one's for you, Rob. 
I appreciate that. I mean, the, the show notes has it listed as an IPA, or is that just left over from last week? I think that's left over. Uh, it's left over. Nobody, uh, nobody, the show notes are a little sketchy. Oh, you guys really have let things go. Yeah. yeah. Well, 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 we let Jeremy go, and basically he does all the, the, the bitch work. Did you say bench, bench work or bitch yeah, work? Bench, bench work. That's what I said. Bench work. He said bench. Accent, my, uh, my Rochester accent comes through occasionally. I'm sorry. So what, what we got <laughs> What we've got here is uh, the Six Point Brewery, as the Bella said last week, wow. is uh, out of Brooklyn. And we've got a uh, just a straight lager, 5.4%, which is right in the wheelhouse of what you want your lagers to be. It's in that tall, hmm. And it's, um, it's a bubbly. I guess it had some foam. It might have had some head on that one. I can tell you, I'm smelling this thing. And the nose on this, even for a lager, has my mouth watering. I yeah. cannot believe how it smells. It smells. It smells like an IPA. This okay. smells like you're supposed to smell. So apparently yeah. Keith dropped all of these off of a five-story cliff. Dude, it's been sitting them. on the porch of your house for three weeks. Don't blame me if it's no, if it's I, no it hasn't. I took it in before it, it arrived oh, okay. before I left. All right, but still, it's been in your house for three weeks. If I, I shook it as hard as I could before I shipped it, it wouldn't still be fizzy. Woo. All right, so I've actually already gotten a taste already. Huh. Well, um, Prost, let us catch prost up. Prost, so yeah, it has a, uh, a kind of nice buttery nose, and yes, a little, a little bit of hoppiness to it. Just a tiny bit, and yeah. I want to say a lemon or a citrusy taste yeah, to it something like that like a like yeah. tang almost there's something bright in there that almost reminds me of a lemon but it's it's more herbal than that mm -hmm. like maybe it's a lemon zest type of scent it's got well, orange little, peel yeah it's got it's got like uh, it's almost like you can taste the pith yes interesting um yeah if you gave this to me i would not automatically if if i didn't see the label i wouldn't automatically say well this is a lager for sure no mm -hmm. just it doesn't because taste of, like a lager no just because of the different flavor profiles what's interesting is on their website it's um that you go to the crisps website it has the can but it doesn't say crisp lager on the, on the image and the um website Hmm. And above it, in big blue letters, matching the blue of the can, it says PILZ, P-I-L-Z. Yeah. yeah, the uh, uh, beer advocate listed as a uh, German Pilsner. It's interesting, but the can actually says crisp lager. Yeah. yeah well, a Pilsner, Pilsner is, a, is a variation on a lager. It's in yeah. the lager family. So technically correct. It looks, it looks like they may have redefined their definition a little bit. Maybe. I mean... The the can says that it was uh this lager was dry hopped, so mm -hmm. that's where that nose comes from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can you really get those floral aromas up in the dry hopping, and probably that uh, slightly herbal flavor to it too. Yeah, they used old world craftsmanships with new, clean, and bold flavors from the right raw materials. Yep. Doesn't say what those raw materials were, except the the fresh hops. Um, um, it's very interesting. So, so the went, uh, German German hops, Americans. So they have some of those in there. Uh, what did it say? Yeah, uh, I don't even know. And it's listed at hops, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's listed at forty-four IBU, which I think, if memory serves, is on the higher side for a lager. For, as far as yeah. bitterness goes, usually I'm used to seeing loggers like in the 20 to 40 range, maybe. Yeah, it is a little bit higher on the IBU side, but um, that's the, okay. Um, I'm digging the higher IBUs of this logger. Yeah, if this it's is a logger or a pill. Either way, I will good. admit, 44 does feel a little high for uh, for a straight up logger, but it's I think it's okay in a pilsner. I think where they're uh, uh, where they're going with this Pilsner, it's on the hoppy side, but it's still really good. It still tastes yeah. like a Pilsner. It doesn't taste like an IPA to me. It doesn't taste like, I, 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 I would say it doesn't taste like a Pilsner or a lager, really, to me. 
Uh, I put it in the pilsner. Yeah, I, I kind of put it. The body definitely is is a pilsner, um, and it's it's a little it's a hoppy pilsner for sure. But I, I I'm digging it. I really really enjoying it. And I think they nailed it in the name. It is very crisp. Yeah, it definitely is. And clean. Yeah, it's hard to. It's really hard to nail down whatever that citrusy thing is that lemon zest or orange peel or I don't know what it is. Interesting. Mm. It's very different. It's really good. You only sent one of these, right? I did. I did. Sorry about that. <laughs> Just makes you want more. I have to go to Brooklyn. Yeah. Other, other than the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the nugget nectar that I bought in bulk, um, and then held onto for way too long. Everything, everything else in the in in the box I send is a one off. So. Mm -hmm. Think of it. Think of it okay. as a catalog. Well, we're gonna, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna we order from. We're gonna savor that over the rest of the episode and uh, give you our review. Yes, Keith, on a scale of one to ten that we've been doing for three years, three and a half years now. <laughs> oh, oh, we're gonna do one to ten tonight. Yeah, okay, please. that's a great idea. Mind. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I can work that in for you. Yeah, great. And then while we. Yeah, but a boosh. And uh, by the way, I wanted to also agree with something you said on a previous show. Yes, more Benny Hill, please. Yes. What's wrong? There's no Benny Hill streaming. More yakety sax. Yep. You can find plenty of bits on YouTube, but it's just not. You can. Thing. You can get little cuts of it, but you know the Benny Hill show, complete with the band I think, and everything. I think in today's. Worth seeing. I think today's 2017 sensibilities uh, may find Benny Hill a little sexist. I don't know. Well, um, think. Uh, <laughs> certainly, it can't be defined as too risque because you've got shows yeah. like Game of Thrones, which we're going to talk about shortly, that feature all kinds of naughtiness. So, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, we'll we'll keep on the lookout for Benny Hill's logical successor. It's that slapstick uh, body comedy. That's the word I'm looking for. Body. Yeah. Uh, all right. I put in a couple topics this week, and they're uh, hot on the social media threads and all over the entertainment web. So I'm curious to hear what the boys have to say about these two topics. First, For, but hold on. No spoilers. I'm, we're going no to spoilers. Game of Thrones now. No spoilers. Yes. We are talking again. Perfect uh, okay. interrupt. Perfect music for to introduce uh, talking about Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah. So, a, unless you are living under a rock, yes, unless you are living under a rock, and if you are, you know, there's there's better places to live. Um, Game of Thrones uh, premiered this past Sunday, and it was the highest rated season premiere uh, for Game of Thrones in its now seven year history. Which is pretty amazing. Uh, anyway, without discussing the main points of the show and the, and the plot, uh, there was something that kind of struck many fans of Game of Thrones and of pop music, specifically British pop music, um, a little askew. And that was Ed Sheeran. If you don't know who Ed Sheeran is, he's a, kind of a strawberry blonde comb-over pop singer, balladeer, high voice fad that's uh, currently on the top of the charts in many places. Very popular in Britain uh, and, and here popular too. popular here too, yeah. Yeah. So the... I have a 14 year old. I know all about Ed Sheeran. There you go. Well, did you also know that he made his acting debut on Game of Thrones on Sunday? Playing. I do now. Thanks for ruining it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, he played a, a soldier that uh, young Miss Arya Stark ran into a group of them uh, and was chatting. And you know, he was singing a little song that he made, especially for the show when she walked up and she said, nice song. And he's like, oh, I just wrote it. So ha ha inside joke. All right. So the interwebs are literally going crazy. Big, huge fans of Game of Thrones are criticizing it because it's an obvious 
um, anachronistic kind of an inclusion to put a pop star so so blatantly in the middle of an episode. Like they didn't even change his hair. He looked like he basically came off the uh, set of a music video, put on a suit of armor, and they filmed it. Meanwhile, the um, diehard Ed Sheeran fans are saying, why is he lowering himself to be in a show like this? And it's really not up to his image and all kinds of stuff. So he really can't win one way or another. And so the question I have for you two is, first of all, do you care? And because <laughs> no. I'm, sure, I'm sure one of the answers from one of the guys at least. Moving on. Uh, but secondly, what are your thoughts about uh, pop stars or musicians or uh, stars from one genre like melting over into another genre? Uh, well, Keith already gave his opinion. I, I, um, well, first of all, uh, when we were in uh, England, it was during Glastonbury, and BBC streams that or what broadcasts Glastonbury live on TV, and Ed Sheeran was kind of the uh, the, the finale of, of Glastonbury, and I literally probably had never heard a song of his, and um, he was a very impressive show at Glastonbury. Just him and a guitar, no no backing band, just him. And it was he was really good. So uh, I just wanted to give him props as um for, for, for me knowing very little about him other than his name, uh, I was impressed. But to to your point of your question, um I, I was we were we watching that 70s show and Jessica Simpson makes some appearances on some of the I think it was like season five ish of that 70s show. And um I had the same feeling that Ed Sheeran fan had, is that why would she stoop so low as to go on that 70s show? I mean, stars of that caliber should not be doing television entertainment. They should, they should be above all of that kind of stuff. Okay, well, I, I have an opinion on that statement. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> not much else, just that one. No, that video. statement, because it, it's similar to something that Rob said. And is, is that stars of that caliber should not be doing that stuff, should not be lowering themselves. And I think that's bullshit, um, <laughs> to put it mildly. Um, I, have, I have a feeling that, you know, if I got to be a star of that caliber somehow, I'm pretty sure that I would want to go on and do anything that I enjoyed watching or doing. So if I was Ed Sheeran and I had an opportunity to go on Game of Thrones and I liked watching Game of Thrones, I'd be all jumping at the chance to go on Game of Thrones. And the same thing with Jessica Simpson. If she was a fan of that 70s show and said, talked to her agent and said, hey, can you get me on that 70s show? I'd love to be on that show. And they had her on. I'd be thrilled. And you know what? A star of that caliber gets to do that because right. they are a star of that caliber. And absolutely they should. And I don't think it lowers them in any way, in any way shape, or form. I think, I oh, think well. it might be crap for the show to invite them on, but that's another story. <laughs> well, if Gary, first I, of all, I want to thank you for playing the devil's advocate. <laughs> out of the shell. And secondly, thank you, Keith, for proving once again how we share a brain. Thank you. There is not a person out there who likes the game likes Game of Thrones that's sitting in their anonymous, nondescript home on their anonymous, nondescript sofa, if the producers of Game of Thrones said, hey, do you want to come on and be on the show? That you wouldn't immediately jump to it and say, hell yes, I do. What do you want me to do? Yeah. So, I mean, he's... <laughs> Just because someone is famous in another genre doesn't mean they can't be a fan of something and geek out about it. So I imagine when either he approached his agent or someone uh, 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 someone else on the outside approached him or his agent and said, hey, would you like an opportunity to be on Game of Thrones? Heck yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you can't blame him for that. I mean, that's... Now, the, I, think, I think probably for most folks where it kind of and it did kind of draw me out of the episode um was that as i mentioned he looked basically the same as he does in real life just with the suit of armor on yeah so it just kind of pulled you out of the episode a little bit but again that's not his fault they're going they have costumers and makeup artists and hairstylists that are going to make him up the way they want him to look so yeah if they wanted it, to, maybe they did it for a little extra pull, a few extra million view viewers to watch the episode, which I, 
imagine what they wanted to do. I, I sure. did really. I mean, is that really going to get extra viewers? Oh, heck yeah. I don't oh, yeah. think so. I don't think so. It, it probably brought in a whole ton of much younger Ed Sheeran fans who don't that's normally. Not a, that's, that is not a young person's show. Uh, no, no, but that's just it. <laughs> but that's just it. Those are added viewers who are now sneaking behind the scenes to pirate it because their parents won't let them watch it. So probably I mean, good on good on you in creating inadvertently creating a whole generation of pirates. HBO, well done. All right, and there's at least some indirect evidence that his being on the show boosted their numbers because, as I said, it was the most watched season premiere that they've ever had. So it was going to be anyway. It was going to be without him. I, and maybe maybe it got a bump, but I don't think it was significant. So, so what I what I really think is, um, if you're a musician or you're um, a television actor or a Broadway actor or whatever, those are all entertainers. And if they want to do something else in entertainment, who cares? I mean, it, it, that's that's the whole point of being a musician is to entertain you. If you want to be, try to be an actor too, fine. There's been plenty of actors that have tried to be musicians and vice versa over the years. And, you know, whatever they want to do, it's fine. It doesn't really matter to me. I don't care. I'm still going to watch Game of Thrones. Well, yeah, I would say to the, Wait, who grew up in the in the era of Bo Knows. So come on. We're all about switch hitting, mm -hmm. as it were, as far as entertainment goes. Oh, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Different kind of switching. Kind, for, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yes, I mean, I, in a sense, I do agree with you, Gary, that uh, it, who cares if they want to do it, go ahead and let them do it. But then, you know, we as the consumers have a right to say, hey, we like it or hey, we don't like it. But I don't think people are justified in saying, you know, he shouldn't do it or he, he was wrong in accepting it or they were wrong yeah, for not, putting him yeah. on. Um, just, you know, if he, if he, knocked it out of the park and which by the way his acting wasn't all that bad i thought he was fine it's just that 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 stupid very characteristic hairstyle of his was front and center as he's sitting in his lannister armor and it's just you were constantly reminded to oh here's ed sheeran being on a show well and honestly with with uh ed sheeran being ed sheeran he, w he really couldn't be in any other armor than, other than lannister armor <laughs> I mean, wow! No, it fits that. awfully well. <laughs> but he at least has some. He at least has some history with with working with genre stuff because he did the he sang the song for the last Bond movie, um, and uh, he supposedly wants to get an acting in. But you know, it's why I get so upset about it. All right, so my next topic. Right, wait, 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 wait! I just want to put a bow on this real quick. Yeah, um, the fact that we just spent. 15 minutes, whatever it was, <laughs> discussing Ed Sheeran on this show means this is the first PNR show ever that my daughter is going to watch. So I just want to take a moment to say, hey, hey, Arabelle, it's dad. Hi, how are you doing? It's good to see you on the show. You should come back more often. All right. Okay. Now we can go on. So Sorry. sometime soon, I would like to do a show in which Keith talks about a hypothetical teenager. <laughs> that oh, you mean uh, every other show we've ever done? No, no. I mean, maybe a little more in depth than the problems that maybe a hypothetical father will call him uh, Alan. Um, maybe. <laughs> And his daughter Paige, perhaps. Yes, exactly. Alan and Paige. Oh, this would be a great show. Yeah. Oh, those would make really good middle names. You know that? Um, yeah, they would. They yeah. would. Somebody should it, use those. Because it sounds like um, <laughs> that a, uh, there are a lot. There's a lot of fun happening at this like. <laughs> oh, fourteen's a great age. Gotta yeah. Super duper. Hey, listen. I know the next topic is something you will have an opinion about, Keith. I especially chose it for you. Because the internet derp, is all derp, derp, buzz. Derp, 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 Sorry. There's no other way to wrap up an edge there. Okay. Carry on. So okay. I have to say that. So last week, Keith yeah. could not get his music I know. views. And I know. this week, I know. he's all over it. I know. Well, this, yeah, it's what I happens know. when I don't have to worry about pushing the show. No, sorry, Gary, you're wrong. He's he's either He's either absent with the music cues or he steps all over you with his music cues. <laughs> hey, it's not my fault you're out of practice, Mr. Never... Wow, well, okay. So the other big uh, entertainment news this week is the announcement of the new 
Doctor Who. The internet was abuzz with who it was going to be, and there was a big story out uh, that it was going to be this one actor uh, that was from Broadchurch, which is a British, a British drama. And then the BBC hit you right between the eyes as they showed this, this preview of this cloaked figure walking through the forest with a very definite swagger. And this, this cloaked figure went up to their head and pulled off their hood. And you found out that the new Doctor Who is a ma'am, Jodie Whittaker, the first female Doctor Who. And of course, there are, as is everything in 2017, two gigantic polar opposite camps that one <laughs> side says the other side is crazy and the other side will claim that the first side is crazy that well, either Rob, you Rob have you, have you met the internet let me introduce yes. you to the internet yes <laughs> this if this can, story was made for trolls yeah i mean if you can pick a topic that has two opinions yeah. the internet will find those two extremes and usually within 36 minutes and since the internet is such a common place for geeks to make it on such a quintessential geek property as Doctor Who. Now, granted, I'm not a Doctor Who fan, but I know Mr. Keith Allen Seifert is, so mm -hmm. I would love to hear his opinion on the announcement of the new Doctor Who. I am thrilled. I am, really? I am absolutely thrilled. Yeah, I think uh, in, when they chose Capaldi, they got actual backlash that it wasn't a woman uh, at that point, that was yeah. real hard, real hard backlash. I can remember uh, that it that it wasn't a woman. They were almost demanding a woman last time. So, so to have them acquiesce to it this way, I was I was neither surprised, but I was thrilled with the choice of woman. I think they did a great job. I think Miss Whitaker will do a great job. I think she's kind of uh, uh, ready and and ready made for that part to be the first female doctor and they and they telegraphed this a long time ago in the series that when they said when they renew they can change genders so the fact that you know it's been this many episodes or this many seasons this many generations of the doctor that uh and it hasn't been a woman yet it was it was just really due so i i both expected it i i am thrilled that they actually did it and i couldn't be more thrilled with the choice i think it's a great choice now there was a there were rumors as there always are, uh, and probably rumors about every single British actor out there. Um, but there were strong rumors that um, that the BBC was trying to get Maisie Williams, who coincidentally plays Arya, Arya Stark on Game of Thrones. Yeah, um, shooting really schedules good. shooting schedules for Game of Thrones are very intense but they're very sporadic so the thought was she could easily do both shows um and accommodate that but she's obviously that didn't young for the doctor i feel she's a little yeah, too but, young for the doctor too yeah um i think i think there is a certain wisdom that needs to go with the doctor and although the doctor can appear as any age um i think matt smith was probably the youngest doctor you'd ever want to see uh, he managed to pull it off uh, uh, pretty well. Uh, I'm not sure that Arya Stark can, but I'd willing to give her a shot. But I, th I think, uh, I think Miss Whitaker is really just, you know, not not to insult the girl, but she's aging gracefully. She's got a few, <laughs> she's got a few smile lines. She's got a few crow's feet around the eyes that just make her uh, both still a very attractive and desirable, but obviously not in her teens anymore you know yes uh i i would keep that you know people complaining about this or just uh, you know they're just being trolls and they're stupid and they should shut up and stop you know using the internet um <laughs> <laughs> get off the internet you just stop using it completely yeah, stop. It's, yeah. it's just i mean come on it, it, dr who suffered a Oh look, she's here! Oh, sorry. Uh, you were saying, Gary? I, I, something I don't know. What was I saying? Oh, Doctor Who suffered uh, with the last Doctor. I think you know he was not a, a popular one. Um, my my older daughter uh, was a huge Doctor Who fan after um, Matt Smith and um, who was the other guy? What was his name? 
you know the guy? It was Peter the Cabell, David Tennant. That was it, David Matt, Tennant. Matt Smith, uh, David Tennant. Yeah, John, I'm, uh, I'm just kidding, right? Okay. Um, so, uh, but they, they they just could not get into the new Doctor, and she like literally stopped watching it. So, yeah, I, I don't blame her. I, I think that this is a, a, gonna kind of revive it. I think it's a, it's nice for Doctor Who to get somebody that is gonna be, um, you know, ha have a, a mass appeal to a lot of people and do something a little bit different. Um, I I watched Broadchurch, which is an excellent show, that, that first season of Broadchurch. You should, the, the British that, version, the American version was just pretty good. Yeah, no, I, so I, good. that's on my to watch list, uh, Broadchurch. It is, British it is, I haven't watched it yet. It is so good, it is really? so good. And she was she was great in that show. So when they announced her as a doctor, I was like, oh, yeah, that's great. Maybe I'll start watching that. You know, she's good. Far be it for me, but <laughs> Doctor Who, uh, first off, is a fictional character. He has no <laughs> yeah. he has no historical basis. Right. Second, or this person has no historical basis. Second, or does they? Secondly, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> secondly. The whole concept behind this guy is that, or this entity, is that he's a, a time lord really without gender or without form, per se, that's inhabiting receptacles. Isn't that right? Well, it's not so much he's inhabiting receptacles. Like, he doesn't take humans and make them his body. He just appears as human, although his internal physiology is different. So he can appear as whomever he wanted. Not really. It's he doesn't get to pick. When he regenerates, he regenerates as a different person. That's their method of changing actors. Yeah. But it, but it's 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 not something he can totally pick. In fact, there's a long running joke about how the doctor keeps wishing to be ginger on the next one. He wants to be a redhead, and still doesn't make it. <laughs> Even with finally becoming a girl, he didn't get to be ginger. So, so maybe the next doctor could be Ed Sheeran. It could be. It could be. But there's it would nothing satisfy both female and 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 ginger. There's nothing hard and fast that says that Doctor Who has to be a guy. Nope. No. In fact, no. like I said, it was it was tele, telegraphed uh, a season ago at least. So now, now they specifically asked in the show. The question will be: Will his, her companion be the traditional female, or will it be a male? Is it companion in the Firefly sense? No. No. <laughs> no. Sidekick. Sidekick, yeah. <laughs> Traveling companion more off. Um, I mean, the, the male doctors have occasionally had male companions. Oh. So they can really they've set the precedent to go either way. Uh, I would suspect they would offset her with a male, but it's not. It's possible that, that there would be female, female. I guess the. To I'm okay either way. I guess to put a bow on it, as Keith eloquently put earlier in the show, um, for both of these topics, people calm down. <laughs> Stop using the internet. Relax. Yeah. Your life will go on. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thanks for that. Gentlemen, it's time now for our picks as we close in on our heart out. Keith, music. Surely to get us banned on YouTube. <laughs> Sweet. You know, there, every once in a while, I come back up to, geez, maybe I should give that show another try. And I do, and I regret it every time. <laughs> it's not for you. If you're looking for anything weird near realism, that's not show for you. Yeah. You can let your imagination stretch. It's amazing. Okay. So speaking of letting our imagination stretch, let's talk about stuff we'd like you to try this week. And Gary's pick is is what we call a, another callback. Gary, what's your pick for the week? My pick is um, the latest uh, album by this uh, singer from across the pond. Game of Matt Thrones Carter. actor. <laughs> Game of Thrones actor Ed Sheeran. <laughs> so. You know him from T.O.T. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I actually listened to the, that album this week for the first time, literally the first time I've ever listened to Ed Sheeran. I I listened to that before all the headlines broke because because mm. I'm going through Game of Thrones now, so I'm kind of like not paying attention to anything Game of Thrones. And I listened to that album earlier in the week. 
it's actually pretty good. It's uh, divide is the problem it from thing, and, and um, it's it's good. I mean, it, it's not the kind of music I would normally listen to. I'm certainly not going to listen to it all the time, or probably near as many times in a row as Keith Stoddard does. But um, <laughs> the, like I said, the guy's a good actor. He's got a good voice. He writes catchy tunes, and it, you know, if you like that kind of music, you just kind of want something poppy and upbeat, and you know. Maybe a little bit of uh, you know romance and love thrown in there. It, it, it's not bad music to listen to. All right. You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. Oh, you need to have the last part of that. <laughs> I got to leave something for you, Rob. I said good day. All right. Keith wants to talk about Hearthstone. Of course I do. Actually, uh, Hearthstone is better than ever, but that's not my pick this week. <laughs> it's not. All right. So what shall it be? What is my pick this week? Oh, God, I had we just, <laughs> Doctor we just copy the show notes and leave the Hearthstone pick in there. The Maybe add a couple of other words onto it. Doctor Who? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, my pick this week is uh, Hyper Local. If you're in Webster or they're even the Rochester area, stop by my house uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It'll be the uh, the uh, uh, neighborhood wide garage sale. We have over like 30 participants, including me. Uh, buy, buy something and mention PNR show and get a discount. <laughs> wow. Throw in some Hearthstone cards. Get, you, get it for plug. free. Get it for free. Get a plug man. for your garage sale. <laughs> How low have we sunk? That was pretty, it was pretty bad, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my God. That's really all I've been doing this week, though. That's really it. I, I'm still playing Golf Clash, and I'm still playing Hearthstone. Golf Clash. Ah, did you get into the new tournament? I didn't try. I haven't oh. had time to put into it. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to stay in the, in the current league ranking I'm in. Mm. So. Yeah. If you'll ne are you now in a position where you can actually play me? Oh, yeah. I think so. Okay, great. So that, we that would do be that sometime. That would be nice. Yeah. All right. My pick for the yeah. week is a uh, cute little board game that we discovered uh, while on vacation. It's all the rage um, among board gaming circles, which you know you can imagine is a pretty wild and crazy group. Um, it actually won the game of the year, uh, the Spiel des Jahres, which is given out. Uh, it's from Germany, but it's basically recognized by the the board gaming community at large is the best um, awards for the year, and it was won the game of the year. So I suggest, uh, if you're interested, give it a try. It's called King Domino. King Domino, you are attempting to build a small little kingdom around your uh, castle, a five-by-five five grid, as it were. And the grids, or the tiles for these grids, are basically dominoes, two-sided two, um, two dominoes. And rather than numbers... Uh, they portray different types of uh, terrain, uh, lakes or farmlands or forests or swamps. And you're trying to build the, these tiles around your kingdom, and you can only connect them to like tiles. Um, some of these sides will have crowns on them. And what you're trying to do is string together consecutive tiles of the same terrain and then multiply it times the number of crowns you have in that terrain. And that's how you score. Um, it's incredibly simple. Uh, the game takes only about 15 to 20 minutes um, with four players. Um, but it's it has surprisingly a lot of interesting choices that you can make and a lot of ways to screw over the other people that you're playing with. Um, it's a great game uh, to play if you like to do it over just chat chatting. Almost like you're playing cards. It's not... There's not a whole lot of strategy in it, a whole lot of mechanics you have to worry about. It's real simple, real easy. And best of all, it's only about $15 to $18, depending on where you buy it from. So that price is guaranteed to go up now that it's been named Game of the Year. So um, go out and find it on Amazon. I just looked. It's like $17.99. Um, so if you're looking for... Like a a simplified version of Carcassonne. Is it is along those lines? Um, you know, a lot of people have said it is like Carcassonne, and there's some similarities there. Um, you don't have to worry about the the meeples, per se, that, that mm -hmm. um, and it's not quite as... Quite as complicated. Uh, no, not nearly as complicated. Um, I tried to get the same group of people that I played King Domino with to play Carcassonne about a year and a half or two years ago, and they hated it. They couldn't yeah. stand it. But this game, they couldn't get enough of it. 
Oh, okay. So um, I, I really recommend it. It's a great for if you're having another couple over. Um, kids can pick it up real simply. Very easy game. King Domino. <laughs> As a fan of Carcassonne, but I, I struggle with that same thing. It's a little complicated to try to yeah. teach someone in the, in the night and, the, and get a game in. So this is a good gateway. Might be a good gateway. Yeah, absolutely. All right, gentlemen, any – oh, we have to review our beer. The Chris. Yes. Yep. Six Point uh, Breweries, the Crisp. So, Gary, what do you think of this beer? Uh, it was good. I, you know, not my favorite style, but uh, one of my favorites of the style. If you can figure out what style it is, um, I oh, I copied numbers. Sorry, you can change this. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm going to give it a seven because I, I enjoyed it. I drank it really quickly, and um, I'm, I'm wishing I had more. Uh, it, you know, it, it's it's still a pilsner or a lager. Depends on the but I, I did like the the dry hopping. I thought that was a pretty nice effect. It had a, uh, a little punch to it that uh, most prisoners and lockers. Do. All right, Mr. Keith. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, thinking of it as a lager, it's definitely one of my favorites. Uh, thinking of it as a pilsner, it's not my favorite pilsner. I have I I, I still think. Um, uh, Victory does a better Pilsner, and uh, of course the Czech Pilsners are amazing. Um, also like uh, Oscar Blues, Mama's Little Yellow Pills, probably better than this, but it's it's up there. Um, as a lager, it's a great go-to lager. If you can get this locally, this is a definitely one just to have in your fridge, because I think it's going to satisfy lager fans and craft beer fans alike. Um, I, I would give it an 8. Out of ten, <laughs> an eight out of five. <laughs> eight out of five. Give it an eight out of five. <laughs> um, you know, I, this one just kind of left me puzzled. Uh, the the <laughs> where Gary really liked the dry hops, I felt like it didn't fit at all with what I consider to be a lager or even a pilsner, as Keith is saying. And I mean, pilsners can be bitter, but um, not from the hops per se, uh, at least for me. Um, and then the the added citrusy, weird orange peel lemons. I just couldn't quite reconcile the the taste into what it was trying to accomplish. So it just kind of left me puzzled. But having said that, um, you know, I definitely say it's worth a try. Um, this may be actually directly up your alley. And if you are like Gary, who you know, really, for the most part, doesn't care for lagers at all, then the little extra hoppiness might suit you and might be a nice bridge for you. So I'll give this a six. Uh, that's a seven overall. Fair number. All right. So, uh, gentlemen, I think that's going to close it out, unless you have any, any bits of wisdom to, put, to part with. I'm glad I asked. Go, go listen to Ed Sheeran. I'd rather have lager than lime. I'll take a strong stout over stride. I'd prefer to confer with a half pint of ale than live a long life till my private parts fail. For life without liquor is to no avail. So bring me lager for lime. I'd rather have lager than lime. I'll take a strong stout over stride. Dad, you're not the boss of me.